바로 Mr. Diver here along with Mr. Rockers and this virtual lesson will be for our Dragon students and the requirements for their next rank. Now what I want to do, let's start out with, uh, let's spread out a little bit and go through our black belt code. Go! Black belt code, sir! I will use my keto to create positive thoughts and actions. I will develop my courage, focus, and discipline. I will choose truth over lies, compassion over hate, peace over violence. I'm unique, talented, and motivated. I'm on a quest to be my best. One of the most important lessons for this upcoming rank is to understand the black belt principle of modesty. Modesty is understanding that all people deserve respect regardless of what they have and regardless of what they can do, their skill level. Our next virtual lesson is actually going to be our bear wrestling. Now we're going to work on mobility, but again, this is one of our strength requirements that we're going to need for this rank. I love bear wrestling because again, it makes you work on the ground to make sure you're mobile so you can get away even if you get knocked to the ground in some dangerous situation. All right, so we're going to go nice and fast. I want to do 15 seconds. I want to see how many times you can make around this chair. I'm going to race against you. All right, so make sure you have a chair or make sure you have a pillow, something in the middle of your floor so that you can go around with me. Are you ready? All right, when I say go, we're going to start flying. Ready, set, go, and begin. Come around. That's one. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. That's two. Oh, yeah. That's three. I'm going faster than you, I think. That's four. Oh, man. That's five. And stop. Whew. Did you make it faster? I'm going to keep practicing. I hope you do too. So the market drill I want to do is just grab like two ch uh, kitchen chairs and just set them apart if you can. If you don't have kitchen chairs, you can maybe get like a pit, uh, two pillows or whatever it is. Excellent. Now let's continue. Bear wrestling. What I want you to do is get down in bear position. Now it's important to stay in bear position. Only your hands and feet are touching the floor. And then I want you to push and pull and move the chairs around. Okay, do it with me. Go. Push, it's kind of like doing a one handed push up. Okay, push, hold, scoot, move around. Alright, gotta keep your balance. Keep it going. Like that. Keep it going. Move, 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 move. Let me see. Keep going. Keep going. A little longer, please. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and break. Speaking of bear wrestling and one-handed push-ups, hey, for extra credit, you can work on a couple one-handed push-ups. Okay, let's see what you got. Do a couple on one arm, switch to the other. Up. Keep it going. Keep it going. Excellent. The next requirement, similar to bear, is actually the crab position. You guys all know this already. But again, to give you a little heads up. Uh, obviously, it's a strength, a strength building drill, just like uh, the bear position. But again, typically, if you get knocked off your feet, you're either going to be belly down or belly up. And we, we just want you to have skills and be able to escape your opponent regardless of how you hit the, hit the ground or, or land on the ground. So in the cramp position, you're going to notice, well, it's a little easier to, to kick with your feet. So let's start out. Let's do first round. Um, and I just want you to move around the chairs real quick. And then immediately, without a break, we're going to go into uh, pushing and pulling the chairs with our feet. Do it with me. Go. Here, cramp position. Just try to move around the chairs as fast as you can. Changing directions. Okay. Keep going. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Keep going. All the way around. I know it's a little bit different. Bear position, you know, keep moving. Bear position seems to be a little easier uh, to move at, at a faster rate. Okay, let's go into uh, our legs now. Push, pull, pull, push, pull, move around. Move the other chair back, pull it, push it across. Okay, circle it around, pull it. Keep it going, keep it going. Show me how strong you are. Go, go, go. 10, 9, 8. Seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Huddle. Now, it wouldn't hurt if you have somebody to do a little bear wrestling with and crab wrestling with. It definitely wouldn't hurt. But if you don't, the drills we just went through will suffice. But if you could uh, talk to your mom and your dad or older brother or sister, even younger brother and sister, just use control like you do in, uh, in a normal keto karate class. All right, on to our next requirement. The next requirement for dragons is actually to be able to break a wooden board with a downward elbow, okay? And the actual requirement is from actually like an 18 inch block, which I know most of you probably don't have one, but that's about the height of a chair. So what I want you to do, grab, grab a chair, grab a pillow, place it on there, and practice your downward elbow. And just about like 10 times or so. Be cautious um, uh, that you don't hurt yourself or, or break the chair. Now, just a little specific, um, the footwork is actually uh, not as uh, particular as some of the other breaks just because of how the downward elbow works. So um, you could, uh, students, you can just be in just a natural stance like from the, from the black belt code. Two, two, or another option or variation is that you could favor one foot forward a little bit more. Two, and drop. Okay, so either your your feet are just going to be like 50-50, okay, or you might favor the opposite side forward, okay, than the striking side. So if I'm breaking. If I'm going to use my right hand, okay, I'm going to have my left foot forward when I follow through, okay? So do a couple practices with that, and we'll see you on the next drill. Okay, next I'd like to go into the Nunchika requirements. Now, you probably left your Nunchikas at Keto, which is totally fine. And so, actually, the Nunchika is our flexible weapon category. So I recommend, well, get an old t-shirt or a cop and just tie a knot in the end, get an adult to help you if you need, uh, actually tie a knot in, in each end because there, there will need to be a little weight to, to do some of the swinging drills, okay? So and if you do that, that'll kind of give you a, a pretty good stand in for your noon chuckas, okay? And so let's start out with just our, 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 our guarding drills and blocking drills. Follow the leader. I'm the leader. Follow along. Ready? Ready! <laughs> Side, side, two, and now quickly, okay, make sure you walk into the correct side, right, here, so you should be mirror imaging me here, so we got our up position, we got our side position, opposite side, and our center guarding position, okay, from there, okay, so stay with me, let's see, let's do a real quick review, okay, and then let's go into our side circle. That's another requirement. So start them out. Now keep in mind, we have two versions of switching. Switching hands and switching sides. So part of it is, if, if I can help you determine how your, your opponent's using their hands, okay, and reading that language, well, typically, they're gonna use their hands or what's in their hand to attack you. Well, you'll respond faster. You'll know which way to move, which way to block, etc. Okay, here, try to get a nice tight, right? This is our wax on and our wax off. It's actually just like Karate Kid did that to, in the movie just to develop that fine circling skill. We're doing it for the same reason, just with noon checkers. Okay, come on, keep them going. Okay. Oh, that's not on the ring test. Wait, right, come on, keep going down. Okay. All right, switching sides, but same hand. All right, so a little bit different. See if you can keep up. I switch, you switch. Oh, that was a fake. Come on, get it going. Nice. Get it going a little faster. Okay. Oh yeah, switch hands, so stay with me. Which hand do I have it in? Make sure you're using the, right? Same sign, mirror imaging me again, please. Okay, come on. A little longer. You should get a nice burn in your arm. Keep it going, keep it going. 
Okay, stay with me. I'm gonna mix them all up now. Stay focused. The only way you can be successful with this drill is if you're watching, right? And concentrating, not just on yourself and your movement, but on my movement too. All right. Okay, come on. A little bit more. Oh, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Jump! Well done. Another skill that's important to your development for this upcoming rank is actually your upper and lower body coordination. And how we've been working on this in class, as most of you know, we were doing the running overhead nunchaka drill, just zigzagging through obstacles. So you can bring it back, bring back the, the, the kitchen chairs or what have you, sit them up, or pillows or something. So what I want you to do, just for the next minute or two, is actually to run, zigzag in and out, no set pattern, but what I'm looking for is students are able to actually keep their feet moving and their noon checkers at the same time, the upper and lower body coordination. So, so your goal of it is, is not to interrupt your footwork or the, the, the twirling of your noon checkers at any time during the drill. So let's do it. Ready, go. Keep it going, keep it going. In and out of go. Yeah, change directions. Okay, circle, maybe switch back, circle one chair, but hold on. Keep it, keep the nutricus moving as your feet are moving. Okay, keep it going, keep it going. A little longer now, quick, quick, quick. keep going. Don't look at me, keep moving. Watch out, don't, okay, here you go, that's better. Go, 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 uh, all right, keep those feet moving. Breathe in, breathe out, don't hold your breath. Ready, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, uh, oh, one. Oh no, bring it in guys. Okay, the next requirement, I love it, okay, is the attack blocking drill, reaction time. Now, if you don't have an opponent, that's okay. Um, we, um, we can do some virtual attack, and it feel like I'm right there at home with you, okay? And how this works is simply this, okay? Uh, grab your flexible weapon, Keep it down in guard position. Remember, do not show your technique until the attack actually comes, okay? If you block before your opponent attacks or if you keep your block in up, your opponent will not attack where you're covered. They will attack where you're open, okay? And very important to keep it down. Guard your body. This way, you'll, you give them like one target, okay? So you're kind of controlling variables. Variables are the changes that can happen. Okay, if I kind of have it in between, well, they might attack over or under. No, no, no. Well, I only want to give them one option. Okay, so keep your guard, guard your body down. So that's not an option for their attack. And then it forces them only overhead. And then by keeping your, your, your technique down, you can actually see better. Here, it kind of blinds you a little bit and it doesn't project confidence. So keep guard down like this. So as I swing, right, I want you to try to time it just like we would do during class, okay? And only block when I extend the weapon, okay? So let's, let's give it a try. So you gotta watch, read body language. Oh, not yet. Ha, no, okay. Wait for it, wait for it, watch, right? Ha, okay, that was better, okay? Ha, yeah, guard head, okay? All right, watch out. Uh, no blocking yet. It hasn't happened yet. You gotta wait till I commit so I can't change. Right? <clears throat> okay, a little better. <clears throat> okay, all right. Watch, wait for me to lunge at you. So to be able to read body language, right, and block at the right moment is very critical, and that's what I'm looking for on your next rank. <clears throat> okay, all right. <clears throat> okay, watch. <clears throat> Yeah, watch for the multiple attack. Okay. Right. Yeah, block. Right. No. Yes. That's correct. No. No. Yeah. Okay, that's better. Okay, now let's speed it up just a little bit. Okay. 
So, um, hey, uh, what I want you to do, uh, shoulder take is really more of a study in footwork and reading your opponent's you know, length of their arm, right, to be able to judge how far you need to stay back and move away to avoid being grabbed or struck or what have you. But let's work a little bit with the footwork here. So again, what I, what I want to do, when I move towards you, you move back, right? So if I move forward, I want you to shuffle back. Okay, if I move backwards, you move forward. Okay, if I move to the side, I want you to kind of, again, kind of mirror me. Okay, so if you can move forward and back to the side, right, stay with me a little bit. Okay, so kind of reading. So kind of like the last attacking drill, the only difference is instead of timing my movement and blocking, you're timing my movement and moving. Okay, maybe a quick side step. Right, right side step, you side step. Okay, remember we don't side step by turning our back. And we actually turn towards wherever our opponent's coming, we turn towards them a little bit. Okay, and work that out. Again, follow me again. Right, if I switch, you switch. If I side step, you side step. Okay, if I come forward, you go back. Here, right? Ah, move back. Control, control. Right? Don't let me get that close to you. Okay? Watch out behind you. Okay? All right, good. All right, excellent. And break. Now, actually, with the shoulder tag, it, I mean, if you, you can talk a family member in to help me out a little bit, that, that wouldn't hurt at all. But just be cautious. Because, again, they may not be as skilled as some of the other students in your class or the instructors. And it is really very, very easy to actually hurt someone, not intentionally, okay? Uh, uh, you might accidentally scratch them or they might accidentally scratch you. So just be, be cautious with it, okay? And take it easy on them. Don't hurt them, okay? But if you, that, you know, again, just follow the rules that we do. Is that you're only allowed to tag the upper arm, okay? You can try to block with the lower arm. That's, but, but really, the, the main benefit really... And the main skill I want you to, to uh, develop is actually the footwork, to be able to outmove and out position because that is the best self-defense, especially against someone bigger and stronger than you. It's just to outmove them, out position them, okay, with your sidestep and uh, just your awareness and your focus. Very important. Okay, just be safe. Okay, I think it's one of everybody's favorite drills, the push down drill, or what we call the sumu drill, right? And it, you guys are really smart. You can see how all this fits together, right? Someone, someone trying to grab you or strike at you is different than someone trying to push you. And if someone's trying to just use brute force to try to control you or push you down, well, it's a little different skill set. And then we just gotta practice it. In class, we normally use it, the, uh, um, the, the battle balls here. But again, uh, just grab your favorite pillow or cushion off the couch. And this one will probably require, and, and you get the most benefit from actually having a person um, to interact with you. But it, uh, you can actually do some of the movements just in the air by yourself, but that's probably not enough to really prepare you. So again, if you can talk somebody in to going through and just start out slow, and it's just really, it's more of a, when someone pushes on you, right, it, is that you actually do a quick side step. It's kind of like when someone's leaning on a door real hard and you open it real fast and then they stumble in, okay? Or the other analogy I've always used is like the bullfighter. Bullfighter never intends to stop that 2,000 pound charging bull, right? It's kind of like at the last moment, ole! The trick to make the bull think that the matador is going to be there. It's kind of the same thing. You got to wait till the last minute when you start feeling a little pressure is that you sidestep off of it. And there's really no shortcut, right? It just, you just gotta get a lot of practice. So have somebody just come at you and just charge at you a couple of times. Just kinda, just kinda, just in a, uh, in a set pattern, okay? To get your practice on your timing. 
and then you can well, then you can kind of break it to maybe a, a little like a, a free sparring type drills with it. Again, just be safe because if you hurt your training partner, they won't want to practice with you anymore. And if you do actually hurt them, remember we always use our words just so they understood that it was a mistake. So have fun, be safe. The last requirement for the dragon's rank, of this upcoming rank, is actually the ability to slip, right? What we call slipping is kind of like, uh, kind of like a, a, kind of like a duck. A duck is actually technically that you drop all the way down underneath the attack. That's typically, uh, that, uh, that is a good defense against like a horizontal swing, but if someone's coming at you, uh, just a slip, just to move your head, if it's coming at your face, it's just, all you have to do is move it just a few inches to make it miss and be totally harmless. And again, uh, it just, the best way I found is the poison snowballs. Yes, you can just take some socks and roll them in a ball and have somebody throw at you. In fact, again, that would be a great idea, right? They could, they could probably just sit on the couch and just lob snowballs at you or, okay, socks. And you could work on just ducking, dodging. Primarily, okay, um, now if it's thrown at your body, obviously you're sidestepping, but I want you to work really hard. If it, if it comes to the head, if I sidestep, that's not the fastest way to guard your head. Now be cautious too, if you're turning your head to avoid being hit, that doesn't move. It's got a tilt. And we tilt and we keep our eyes forward so we can see the next one. I'm actually gonna do some virtual attacking. I'm gonna throw right at you, right, right through the screen. And obviously if the snowball's coming, right, to this side, uh, uh, try to duck to the other way, right? Just like that, over it's coming here, you, your head should be moving this direction, right? Boom, so if it comes to this corner of the screen, I want you to move this way. If it comes to this side, I want you to move this way. Okay, let's see what you got. Hey, hey, yep. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, those are all, you should all be moving this way on this one. Okay, just from that. Who I threw that off camera there, sorry. There we are. Okay, watch, watch. All of those, there you go. Or to your right side, so your head should be moving to your left side. Okay, let's do a few more here. Ooh, that's getting better. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah, 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 that's the other side. The sooner you can pick up on which side I'm throwing to, I want you to work on getting that head to the opposite. Okay, okay, come on. Okay, there we go, that's good. Yep, these are all to your left side. You should be moving to the right. There's a few more, let's get that. Okay, now let's continue on. Now I'm gonna start throwing the snowballs and mixing them up. Don't keep your head in one spot because, well, that's where your opponent's gonna attack. Not where your head was, it's where it's at. So when you, when you slip, recover back up again, okay? So let's kind of continue where we left off. All right, yes. If it's coming to this side of your screen, you should be slipping your head opposite. All right, there we go. All right, let's get you back in there. Now watch out for the changes. Okay, looking good. Ah, yeah, watch, watch. Okay. See if you can pick up which side it's coming to. All right, keep your eyes up. Keep moving. Okay. All right. Whoa, 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 look out. All right. Cool. All right. Ah, good, good. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, man, good. Good, eyes up. Watch. Watch closely. Uh, yes. Our virtual lesson is coming to an end. Hey, remember, the lesson of black belt modesty is just understanding that all people deserve respect regardless of what they have or what they can do. Okay, so let me, get, let me explain this another way. Like, we should only show respect for people who are good at karate. Well, that'd be kind of silly. Or only for doctors, only for mechanics, only for teachers, only for stay-at-home mom or dads. Uh, no, all people deserve respect regardless of their skill level, regardless of their occupation, regardless if they're good at karate or baseball, gymnastics, spelling, sight words, what have you. All people deserve respect. So that's the true 
understanding of black belt modesty. When you come to that idea that people are people. Hey, I had a great time. I hope you had a great time as well. Hey, we'll see you soon on the next virtual lesson.